I'm Robert Lomas, and this is the seventeenth and final episode of a work called Ten Nights in the Black Lion, which was written by the novelist Daniel Owen in 1859. It was originally written as a serial in a magazine called Charles Abella, which had been produced by his friend Nathaniel Jones, but was now edited by John Davis. The final issue was published on December the 29th, 1859, as the magazine ran out of money and was closed. John Davis had not been able to match the editorial skills of Nathaniel Jones, who had long since moved on to Bala College to study to become a minister of the Calvinistic Methodist cause. And John Davis's attempts to commercialise the magazine by putting adverts on the front page had not improved its finances. The final episode of Daniel Owen's first prose work in Welsh was published on December the 15th, 1859, in what proved to be the penultimate issue of the magazine. It had lasted for just a year. Episode 17. The Tenth Evening. The following day, a large poster from the village barristers was pinned to the door of the Black Lion. It announced that a public meeting was to take place that evening in the pub, and Mr Hargrove was to preside over it. I attended that meeting. Mr Hargreave opened the proceedings by inviting greetings from the participants to offer sentimental memories of the town from ten years ago. He then reviewed the changes that had taken place in the circumstances of the inhabitants and the attitude of the place over the time since. Ten years ago, he said, referring to an old grayling by his name, you had two sons, affectionate, hopeful and courageous boys. Where are they now? No answer required. Their history and yours are too well known. Ten years ago I had a family with a dear and kind son. Heaven knows how I tried to keep him and protect him. But he fell. The atmosphere of the village has been darkened by insensible arrows and dark skies. And who is safe? What's to be done? Is there no remedy? Yes, yes, it can change. A loud crowd of voices cried out at once throughout the room. Well, if it can, our task tonight is to make proper use of change for our safety, said Mr. Hargrove. He then invited suggestions. There's only one medicine, said Joe Morgan. The cursed trade must cease amongst us. Destroy the well, and the stream shall perish. If you desire to save the young, the weak, and the innocent, you must keep them from temptation. Grandchildren, brothers and fathers, for one who was near to be lost, and one who trembles at the thought of the danger that is daily spread, and as one who trembles at the thought of the danger that is daily spread on his path, I beseech you to stop the fiery overflow that defiles everything that is good and beautiful among you. Whose right or liberty would be restricted if these measures were adopted? And indeed, who has the right to sow the seeds of disease and mortality in our district? Fathers all, for the sake of your loved ones, put an end to this never-ending trade that causes such horrific consequences. Look at Simon Slade, the happy and kind miller, and compare him to Simon Slade, the innkeeper. Was he harmed by the freedom of harm to his neighbours? No, no, in the name of heaven, therefore, erase this evil trade. Mr Morgan then put forward a series of decisions to that effect. He suggested the means by which the village's views were to be expressed to the authorities that the will of the people was to abolish the intoxicating trade. After that day, the meeting decided that the Black Lion would be closed and the sale of all spirits to be forbidden from these premises. They vowed to raise funds to compensate Slade's debtors and to sell the premises. As I had expected, there were some issues raised about the propriety of taking such an important and impulsive step. But after some thoughtful refinements, the people's sensibilities and morality proved overwhelming. I was due to leave Cedarville the following morning, and when I took my seat on the top of the coach, I watched the sign of the Black Lion, that for years had been drawing men to the centre of its devastating misery, fall to the ground brought down by the powerful blows of the hammer of the old village carpenter. And with that last joyful sight, my carriage drove away. 
Thus the end of the 17th episode of Ten Nights in the Black Lion, written by Daniel Owen. It was first published in the magazine Charles Abella on December the 15th, 1859. I'm Robert Lomas, and I spent the last year translating this, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to read the story for yourself, I've published the full Welsh text, along with my translation, which I have read to you over the last 17 weeks, in a book entitled Ten Nights in the Black Lion by Daniel Owen, translated by Robert Lomas. The original Welsh text is included and is curated by Dr John Howell Roberts. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the subscribe box in the bottom right hand corner of the screen.